Hello, this is Mark from Productive Computing and Productive Computing University. Thanks for joining us on this video. Today we feature an excerpt from a course called Mastering Claris Studio. This particular course has been around since the Claris Studio platform launched, and it's being updated continuously because Claris is updating the Claris Studio platform continuously. And this particular feature called Calculations, this is known as a calculation type field, or you could call it calculation functions. These are functions that are embedded within Claris Studio and available to you on most forms. They're available on the spreadsheet, the Kanban board, the list view, and you can make your own calculations. And this is a brand new offering. This was not available just a week ago. In fact, these changes came out on March 21st, 2023. Now they've claimed that this is just the tip of the iceberg and they've built quite a few functions already, but there's still a lot more to go. And the functionality is somewhat limited compared to what we have with the full range of functions and capability in Claris Pro, for example. But it is a good first offering, and I think you'll like what you see, or at least you'll like the beginnings of the ideas that they've started and how it is implemented. And I will be taking you through that right now in Claris Studio over the next 16 minutes or so. If you are interested in learning more about the university, I recommend looking at subscribing to the bundle. The bundle includes everything that we offer as one price that you pay per year. So without further ado, let's dig into this lesson. It's called Calculations, and it focuses on Clara Studio and the brand new calculation engine. In this lesson, we learn about the calculation field type available in Clara Studio. So log into Clara Studio, select Views, and we'll create a new view to explore this new field type. I'll do that here at the top right. And the view to select right now is Spreadsheet. So I'll create a spreadsheet, and that'll give us a workspace here for us to work with. Now the first thing you want to do is rename your table. So I'll select up here and rename the table. I'll call this Test Calc, and I'll keep it one word. Okay, let's create a number field first. And we'll say this is quantity. And we'll add that column. And then we'll add another number field called unit price. And now our first calculation. So I'll add a field, type calculation down here. Give it a name, I'll call it total. And this is where you enter your formula. So there are many similarities between this and the engine in Claris Pro, also known as FileMaker Pro, in that I can simply start typing a formula, build an expression of one plus one, then I'll add that field, and it'll give me two as the result, which is exactly what you'd expect. Now to edit this, I can just double click the header here, and it'll bring me right back into the edit field options, and then the formula will expose itself down below. This adheres to traditional math, and that there's an order of operations, and you'll get your results just like you'd expect. Now to reference a field, you start by entering the table name. So I'll start by entering test, and it knows the table I'm referring to, it lists here test calc, a reference to current table. So I'll select the enter key on the keyboard and that will fill in the entire table name. Then I'll put a dot, very similar to what you'd get with dot notation if you're already familiar with traditional programming. And then it'll expose all the fields, including itself, in the list of fields to pick. So I can right now with QTY selected for quantity, I'll just select the enter key and it'll put it in the quantity field like that. So I'll click Save, and we get nothing because there is no quantity at the moment. So let me put 10 for the quantity. There we go. So now we have 10 in our calculation. Double click the total again. And this time we can use the multiplier, and I'll just multiply that by the unit price. So I'll again type test, return key, dot, unit price, now notice something here, and this is really important. Unit price has a space in the name, whereas QTY for quantity does not. As such, when you pick a field with a space, you're going to have this single quote character surrounding it, 
so that it can be referenced properly by the calc engine. I'll click save here. And of course it's zero because we're multiplying by nothing, but if we had, let's say $12.52, we have an interesting total here. Now this is probably because it's in beta. In fact, this is a known issue. In some cases, results of arithmetic calculations are returned as floating point values. The workaround is to use the round function or similar functions to control precision. Let me change this to just 1250 and see if that fixes it. Yeah, 125. So that could explain the rounding issue. Now, speaking of rounding, let's say I had a number that had a bunch of decimals multiplied by another number with a bunch of decimals. Now our decimals are carried to five places. I can double click this again, and we can now prescribe another function here called round. So I'll just do round left paren, and because it recognizes that, it brings up a little help window and a quick fill. Returns the number rounded to a specific precision, number of decimal places. This function exists on the Claris Pro side as well. So all it needs now is a comma, and the number of places I want to round to, and then I'll complete it with this right paren. So now I'm rounding the quantity times the unit price. And because multiplication happens before the round function takes place, it'll happen within the parentheses first. So it's going to do its multiplication, then it'll round the final result. So I'll save that. And it does indeed round it. Okay, so what else can we do here? We can actually build in some literal text. So if I add to the calculation, very similar to how we've been doing it for years on the pro side, if I put, quote, this is the total, and quote it there at the end, I will join these with a plus sign instead of an ampersand. And that's the one big difference here and something that you might have to get used to when you're joining a text string with a calculation, you'll be using the plus sign. So let me save that now. And now we have a text string that has, this is the total and the actual total. I can throw a dollar sign in there if I wanted to, right like this. And now we have that. Okay, let's create another calculation field and we'll use the sum option. So I'll click this and we'll do another calc field. And I'll just say sum test as the field name or the column name. And we will use the sum formula. And now notice I'm just typing SUM left paren, and then it brings up this helper screen. And then within this, I'm going to select the table by starting this test calc string, enter dot QTY. And then I'll put a comma as a parameter indicating the second field that I want to add. So test calc again dot unit price. Okay, so now I'm going to add those two fields together. And that should put it over here. So 10.2548 plus 12.525 should be 22.7798. Let me pause there and bring up some existing limitations as this is still a very new feature. I'll go to the help here and click on what's new. Then I'll look at this primer for Clara Studio Calculations, which is a support doc they've provided to help us out. And they've done a comparison between what you use in Claris Pro versus Claris Studio. And you'll see there's a lot of similarities. We have a lot of the same operators, yet there are some notable differences. You might want to review this document in a little bit more detail on your own. The text operators, which we already saw, we'll be using ampersand to append a string versus a plus. My only criticism with this is the plus might be easily confused with the plus for adding, but there must be a technical limitation why ampersand can't be used for that in Claire Studio. I do like this flexible option here. We use double quotes when we're using a text constant in Pro, but we get the choice of either double quotes or single quotes for text constant in Studio. Inserting a paragraph carriage return right now in a formula is not available on Studio. The way making comments works is the same. It'll use the exact same symbols. However, there is one limitation which we'll read about in a minute. When it comes to field references, if you're in a calculation field in Pro, you'll simply call the field and the calculation engine knows the context of where you're located, so there's no need to state the table name. In Studio, you will be adding the table name with dot notation, so table dot field, just like you saw in my previous example. Currently, there is no ability to reference a field in another table in Studio. 
Here's some additional operators, and their use goes beyond the scope of my complete understanding and this video. But feel free to look these up online, either Wikipedia or otherwise. Then we have the calculation functions here. It says right here, more are on the way. For more information, see the inline descriptions in the calculation editor. You saw that earlier when we started typing and it brought that information up. So this is a good start. We have the absolute value, ceiling. This is new, even, odd. Neither of those are available in Pro, but they are available in Studio. So that's a nice plus. We have this power option. Then we have some of the usual ones you'd expect, the square root, the sum, the max, the min. Then we have logical functions and in faults, not available in Pro, available on Studio. We do have the logical function if, which will come in handy. We'll look at that next. We don't have case at this time. Then we have others as well down here. We have the beginning of our get functions. We're limited to getting the account name, the record ID, the user ID, or the username. So let's quickly run over the notes here. This we already talked about, how to reference a field name by first putting in the table name. This is an important one. While Clara Studio does not allow you to specify a results data type, for example, number, text, and date, Clara Studio will try to choose the appropriate data type. For example, during concatenation, if a string is detected, either from the text field or text constant, then Clara Studio will return a string. If two numbers are detected, Clara Studio will return a number. We might look at that here in a second on how it interprets whether it's going to be a number or a text. The template string operator makes it easier to write an expression that includes multiple text constants. This is a new feature, but it looks to be a potentially simpler way to create an expression that includes both constants and formulas by surrounding that in these two, what I call accent marks. Default browser whitespace collapse behavior will display multiple spaces in a text constant. For example, quote, multiple spaces as a single space. The string value is not affected. Now, for some known issues as of this recording, in some views, the space for the calculation editor is limited. There's a workaround for more space. You can use the calculation field object in a form view. New lines can't be added in the calculation editor. If you hit enter, it won't accept that. References to fields from different tables aren't available. We already talked about that. In some cases, results of arithmetic calculations are returned as floating point values. That could explain what we saw when we had that issue where we multiplied those two numbers together. When using the equals equals operator to compare two fields, if both fields are empty, false is returned. If you add comments, they must be placed at the end of the calculation formula, not at the beginning. All right, so those are the known issues. Let's explore a couple more options. I want to go over the if option. Okay, so let's create a brand new calculation field. I'll call it large quantity. So let's create an if statement, if. There's our if information. And it gets me ready here so I can just continue typing if the test calc dot quantity is greater than 100, then this is a large order will be the result of that. So right now, because I didn't put a false parameter in there, it's simply putting in the word false. If I were to put a quantity of greater than 100, then it would say this is a large order. And if it's false, I'll say, this is a small order. And I'll put the word large in uppercase just to make it consistent. So this is a large order versus this is a small order. Okay, let's add a comment in here. It already said we can't put a comment at the beginning of the calc. If I attempt to do that, let me just copy this to my clipboard here. If I attempt to do that, this is a comment. I can't do that even if I put a space here. It probably has something to do with us not being able to put a carriage return in this formula. So see, it found an invalid character. It doesn't like what I have here. So if I remove that comment from the top and instead put it at the bottom, again, keeping in mind that I can't actually put return markers yet here in this box, it will work and allow me to put a comment. To me, this is a work in progress when it comes to how this box is behaving. There was something else they mentioned, which is to work around the small box limitation. There's a couple ways to do that. You can use this option here 
to better expand. And when you edit your formula from here, there is a much bigger box that you can see more. It goes wider, but still not adjustable from a size standpoint. If you were to create a form from this spreadsheet, let me go back to all views and create a form from the spreadsheet. Okay. So once I do that here, you can see that there's a lot more room still with editing these calcs from the form view as a workaround for the small box that you saw on the spreadsheet. Again, I have a feeling that a lot of this interface and design for the calculation options will be changing rather quickly. This is the first introduction to it as of this recording. So we're seeing a glimpse of the future and we're seeing a glimpse of the potential for using these calcs. Let me finalize this training by addressing one other thing, and that is the type of result that's returned. Let me go back to the spreadsheet for this, and let me just delete some of these extra columns, and we'll stick with just the one column for the calc. I'll stick with total. I do want to add one more field, which is going to be a single choice field. I'll call it options, okay? And then our options for this, let's just say we were doing a survey and I wanted options for choose one, choose two, or choose three. Okay, so I'll do an option of one. Now let me move this option over here to the left of total, and I'm going to rename this total field to result, and I'm going to take that formula out of there and simply put in the new field. I'm going to reference this new option field. So I'll do test calc dot options, save that. And of course, one equals one, no problem with that. Now let me add one more field. I'll make it a single choice as well. And we'll give them the same options as the other one, one, two, three. Okay, let me move option two over here. And let me go here and edit this and we'll call it option one. Okay, so let's just say that option one was a survey question and option two was a survey question. And we're asking people to fill in choices one, two, or three. So if I have this result here, you might say to yourself, okay, well, I wanna add option one plus option two. And how do I do that? So I've got test calc option one already referenced and we already know that that works. So I'll copy that. And I'll simply put a plus sign here, and then I'll put option two, and click save. And what's happening here is it's interpreting these as text, which they are, and it's combining or concatenating one and two, giving you an interesting text result of 12, when really you wanted the result of three. Again, that comes back to this being interpreted as a text field versus a number. Now, if you were to do the same sort of thing in Pro, you would get the same result. The difference here is that in Pro, you can use a function called get as number, and it'll tell the calculation engine to interpret these as numbers versus text. We don't have that option yet in Clara Studio. Hopefully that will happen. But in the meantime, you can use a workaround for that as well, and you can simply Use the sum command and surround each of those with that function of sum, which will then tell the engine to interpret those as numbers. Even though you're not really summing anything, it's just converting it from a text to a number because the sum function is introduced. In this way, you should get the proper result of three. So just a quick tip, work around for that because I have a feeling if you're using Clara Studio for any kind of survey gathering and you want people to have choices, numbered choices like this, and perhaps you want to add them up or come out with a min and max or some other formula and calculation, you'll need to first turn it into a number or else it'll be interpreted as text. This calculation field is available in all views except the dashboard view. The link to the primer for Claire's calculations, that document that we were looking at, is also available under the What's New as of the March 21st, 2023 update. This concludes our lesson working with calculations and Claire's Studio. Feel free to experiment more on your own and get familiar with the process. Thanks for joining us on this lesson, and please consider using the links below to enroll in our course called Mastering Clara Studio. Also, please note other offerings available at Productive Computing University for you, the professional Claris FileMaker developer.